Guys, if you're a fan of the podcast and you want more content, that's available to you at patreon.com. You can subscribe to the Patreon and get bonus episodes of the podcast. You get early release episodes of the weekly podcast. You also get Dog Walks with Davey, the Extra Sly Guy podcast, vlogs, and much, much more. All for as little as £2. If you just head over to patreon.com forward slash Sly Guy podcast and you can subscribe there, support me and support the podcast. Or if you're too lazy to actually type it into your browser, you can just follow the link in the description of the podcast. We are proudly sponsored by Visualantics. Visualantics are the number one podcast supplier for this scene. And they supply all exclusively the Sly Guy podcast merchandise. You can head to their website and check out all the range of merch that we have. And whenever you're checking out, you can get a discount of 10% by using the discount code SLYGUY10 at checkout. That's SLYGUY10 at checkout to get 10% off all Sly Guy podcast merch. You're going to get the Fox logo, you can get the wee peace sign, or you can get the Physique Guys, since it's Physique Guys Summer and whatnot. Get over there, visualanticsapparel.com, check it out, and thank you for sponsoring the podcast. We are always brought to you in association with Modest Beer. Modest, you know it by now, you've tasted it. I've been re- waxing lyrical about Modest Beer for the last God knows how many years, and now finally you guys are cotton it on. You want to wear some Modest merch? Head to their website, modestbeer.co.uk. Check out their line of merch. You can subscribe to their brews letter to get monthly updates as to what's going on in the world of Modest. And you can check out the wide range of beers that they have exclusively there. And if that's not enough, you can get 15% at checkout by using the code SLYPA15. That's SLYPA15 at checkout to get 15% off your Modest purchases now. I'm the Sly Guy. Ladies and gentlemen, hello, boys, girls, whoever else, animals if you want, welcome to this week's episode of the Sly Guy Podcast. Wherever it is you're finding me, wherever it is you're listening, if this is the first time you've watched the show or listened, thank you very much. Um, If you've hit the subscribe button, wherever it is you're listening or watching, I appreciate that too. The more people subscribe, the better the show can do. And I appreciate all the listens from the long-time listeners and the new listeners alike. So welcome on aboard this episode. If it is your first time checking out, Welcome indeed, and what an episode it is to see really what this podcast is about. This week's guest is friend of the show, stalwart of the Sly Guy podcast. He goes far as saying Hall of Fame guest. He's a Sly Guy Hall of Famer. He is my friend and yours, Psychic Glenn. Glenn Gordon has not been on the pod for about, geez, a lot since certainly since the studio has been done, and this was a great episode. We had a lot of fun in this episode. Glenn did what Glenn does. Glenn gives some insights, as only he can do. He brought me some joy. He confused me in parts, I'll not lie. But ultimately, he was 100% Glenn. And this episode was just two, as Glenn says, pandas. Just shooting the shit, catching up and having a great time. So guys, thanks again for your ears. If you haven't subscribed to the podcast yet, do that now. If you're listening to it in the audio format, there is indeed a video podcast available on YouTube. You can check that out there now as well. And other than that, just sit back, relax yourselves, and enjoy this week's episode of the Sly Guy Podcast with me and Psychic Glenn. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome once again to, I'd say your favourite podcast of mine, the Sly Guy Podcast. And, and it feels like, I feel like the, the world has, has righted itself. The planets are aligned, the stars and the moons have gathered. Is that a thing? Yes. And Glenn is back on the podcast. Hello, everybody. Glenn, how are you doing? I am doing good, Dave. I've missed you all. Oh, no, I've missed you too. No, no. I just want to say off the bat, first things first, you've been a wee bit of a podcast whore. I've seen you doing lots of other podcasts, not well, this one. This is your home podcast, Glenn. What are you doing? This is it. This is home. But when you see other good talent out there, you've got to support it. And I think you've really got, because art's art. And I've realised that lately, lately is that I just love art. You love art? I love art and all types of art. Can I just say, speaking of art, you know who you look a wee bit like there with the, the glasses on? George because, Michael. No, that was, yeah. I thought you were going to say Elton John. Uh, no, I mean, not Elton. <laughs> no. I've been called George Michael before. It's yeah. all right. It's at this angle. You're apt to me. It's a bit George Michael. It's I mean, the Arnold. George Michael's a dish, isn't he? He was, ha- he was handsome. Yeah. Like, I mean, he was. Ha- wouldn't be my cup of tea, but he was handsome, like. No, so who would... Oh, I mean, are you trying to say to me you prefer Elton John to George Michael? No, but Elton John with the glasses, do you know what I mean? But well, you're not a five, because I'm one Well, I might look like Elton John one day, but I'm older, I might, you might, you never know. No, you don't. You look more like George, you know? Look at Elton. Elton. I actually look more like Elton, hold on. Let me see, I'll put my glasses on, see who we... Who do I look? I look like more like your mum. Bronson, you know the... Bronson. The, the prisoner. It's Charles Bronson and George Charles Michael. Bronson. Yeah. There you have it. 
But no, George Michael's a good look. I think personally, George Michael's a good eighties look, and especially we had that blonde in. Yeah, would that be something you would be tempted with? Oh, I'm thinking of getting a couple of wee tips in. Funny enough, as the wee hairdress was talking about that we did in, maybe at the weekend, maybe we're going to get a wee bit in. Hopefully, oh, maybe something. Because you know what, know. I do want to say, because your your previous style was down. I uh, know it was I, horrible. I like the I like the up look. I think it, I know. It, it's much better. I like it up too, like, but it's, I like it down as well. It's lovely down too. When I get it down, I like it down. Mm-hmm. But it's just, it's up at the minute and I'm keeping it up. But Do you prefer it up or down? I don't know at the minute I'm liking it up, but I'll let them, what do you say, in six months, I'll be all like smicky again and I'll have it down and I'll be like, it's just the way I go. I go in and out of like, I don't know. But you know what you don't have? I'm sparkle. Is sparkle's the right way to say I go in and out of it. That's the right way. I'm not stylish in any way at all. I'm not. Lately, I've been going into fresh garbage. Yeah. I have. I didn't like, want to say that. I'm practically a ghost. I'm practically a ghost within the premises now. So, like, really everything, you know, everything I'm wearing. Because I did want to, want to, because I would say the previous, like, styles you've had on the podcast, bright, vibrant, I know, but it's still, it's still a shirt. And you, like, you went to an event where you dressed as a Native American. Yes, and I and very politically and correctly worded it <laughs> a Indian. And I, that's the whole thing. I see lately I've realised my own political incorrectness in certain ways. And you just have got to realise, I mean, I got expelled from two schools. I have no GCS, it's maybe sometimes why I say things, I don't mean to say them in that way. But I did reference it as a mm-hmm. as an Indian because it was a cowboy and Indian themed uh-huh. party. Well, I made it a but party. You have you've seemed to keep on some of that Native American style. Is that the new look you're going for? or is this I think it's always been there, but I have never been allowed to express it before. Mm-hmm. This is the way I always wanted to dress, as even far back as I can ever remember, but I would, Never have been allowed, and that have only just really occurred to me too how good the actual clothes are in fresh garbage. Mm-hmm. Like I went in there for the bongs, I went in there for the things she could suck and the things she could smoke. Believe you me, for years, twenty odd years, and it's only lately I've started to see some of the threats. Mm-hmm. But that actually looks comfy, light, comfortable, and a light. Bit, yeah, like I do believe the devil wears a suit, Dave. The devil wears a suit and a Prada suit. That's uh-huh, what uh-huh. the movies, huh? but a, su- a black suit. Think about it. Yeah, I don't think I I, I want to get away from big labels. Mm-hmm. Like, the devil also has like well, does he just wear the suit on top because doesn't he have like horse's legs so. well it's symbols really it's symbols I think mm-hmm. but I don't want to get off on an early start into all that shit yes too, we don't need to go too far too, we're going to get too deep in that we can't wait we, we don't want you to be too super conscious please enjoy the entertainment and be free yeah. be meant to be free and be here with us right now you're here with me you're here with me and Dave but no, you have you, you. You seem to be, you seem to be in a much more zen place. You I look am. zen. You I'm seem zen. What's happier what's the and calmer compared yeah. to like this time last year? I, like last year, I realised how stressed out I was. Mm-hmm. Like my whole time, my hair was green. I was so stressed out, and I didn't even realise my medications increased. Now I feel better focused. Uh-huh. Was there a moment that it all kind of came to head for you? Were like if that something needs to change? Here? Well, actually, the medication, the medication went in short supply, so I couldn't get the medication. So I said to my doctor, well, what about increasing it? And then when I got the increase, I realised, oh my God, the difference. And the, the green hair, I actually have it. Yeah. But I don't know now. I, I still feel that there's there's something about that green hair. Yeah, You know, there I is think, something about that green hair. But do you think if that if we were to take the green hair and put it on you now, it would be a bad, like you would go back in that place? Because mm. there's an episode of Simpsons. Where I don't Snape, think I would go back it? into that. Have you? Well, I, well, well I'm, not, I'm being serious. I'm not actually. That's a very good point. I don't want to go back into that place ever. I don't yeah. ever like. I don't. This is why now I'm like right. Because there's other things going on in the world, Dave, and I, I have to be always this pleasant, nice person to do my job, right? And that's part of what I have to do. It's part of who I am, but it can be difficult if I have things going on. So, mostly the things that really affect me is other people and things that go on with other people. I mean, I'm quite boring. I am like really. Give me a box of crayons, and yes, I can make it colourful, but otherwise, it's black and white, really. Truthfully, like, I am quite peaceful. I am. But the green hair, like, because when you gave it to me, I felt a wee bit strange about having it. I'm like, if I have this, am I going to inherit the, the demons of the green hair? Dave, it's not that. But I think you need to channel a wee bit of Pazuzu. I think you need a wee bit of me, a wee bit of boldness. You're Just a wee say, tiny bit, a wee I tiny need a wee bit. bit of, a wee bit of you and me. Is yes. That what you're to say? Yeah, yeah. Glenn. Are you flirting me? Mm hmm. Know what I mean? Yeah. Know what I, I mean? It is in this building. The Pazuzu, is that so we're going to call the green hair Pazuzu? Pazuzu? Yeah. Well, Pazuzu, yeah. Pazuzu, I think Pazuzu. But remember I sent you the photo of me whenever I had it on? I know. 
I look just like a bigger version of you, don't I know. We look you more actually really did. I did. And I think you should play about with her pieces. You think so? 100%. But then the thing like about you could me, get one like this and you could have it long, David, on. You could have like fucking. But what people know now is I'm a bald guy. So I, I've already come out as bald. So? so if I all of a sudden just. Because I, I, I told this story in the podcast. Just before. to see if you go to Turkey. See if you go to Turkey and you come back to me <laughs> with those things in your hair and we'll laugh at you. But Glenn, a lot I'll of point the, and laugh and I'll say, me, ha ha. Let me, let me talk about this because this is something that whenever my hair was going, people are like, you should do. I find. A lot of hair transplants look no different than uh, hair systems. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. You have a transplant, and they put this big noticeable line. Yeah. There's no, there's no, it does look natural. It looks like That's a wig. What I mean. And you're paying all it that money. It looks more like a wig than what a wig does. Yeah. I know. I Do you know, know what I mean? I think guys come back with his hair comb back, let him look like a Michael Myers mask. Well, that's the same. I mean, I mean, you can paint your face, you can wear colours, and all. Everything that you see here is wearable. It, I mean, it really is. I've got threads in my face. I mean, I'm even trying to cut down on toxins a wee bit. Like, no, like, I will get a wee bit of Botox and it done, but I'm not rushing to get it done. I'll get it done in, in the winter time. It's fine. See, that's another thing. You look, you look more natural at the minute. I'm trying to be more natural. Yeah, I, I don't want to be in my early 30s. I'm not mean, not three years, I'm going to be 40. And it's fine. Mm-hmm. See, that hair, hair, what's good as well, is see if you get it done, you, you don't, you shouldn't have it back to see the hairline. Yeah. Like, God forbid, I, I don't know this guy personally, I don't want to slag him off in case you, and I, I, you strike me as kind of guy, be a fan of his work. Yeah. But Brian from Westlife, his hair's not good. No. He's had it done, and he's wearing hair bands and all, you're going, Brian, you don't need that. But I don't think people realise how good actual hair pieces, because it's a hidden mm-hmm. secret, I mean, it really is. That one there, like, there's no seam on it, so you like, and it's skin. It's uh-huh. actual skin. You do not know where you're touching my head and where you're touching. Yeah. Don't it's, take and it it's off weird. It can't come off. Good, I don't have to take it off. I don't want you to do that one off because it's no. a good one. It's looking well. I know. Cause remember last time <coughs> you pulled it off and surprised me? I know. And then you put it on sideways. Baldy Paul. Baldy Paul came out. I know. <coughs> oh my goodness. I got a... But I think I think that looks well. I think it's a good look. I think the style up, it suits yeah. you. I, think, I just think you look great, Glenn, and it's good to see that. You know? And you're... Oh. <laughs> Thank you. That's impressive strength. You've been watching. He needed, a, he needed a spread. Yeah. You know what I mean. I shouldn't have come empty-handed, but I needed a spread. I need a spread, and I feel better from seeing the spread. See what I mean. Speaking of the spread, this is, seems like something that maybe ties into the the, the the world you would know of a bit more. Yeah. Like, cause you you talked to me before about crystals. Yes. On the because again, I thought it was all mumbo jumbo. Yeah. And then you told me to buy a crystal, and I got one, put it on my window. I know if it's not brought me any more fortune yet, but I still hold hope. Yeah. But there's a thing that I've seen recently. Uh, I, I beg to differ. Mm-hmm. I've seen the brand new car. I've seen certain changes. I've seen weight loss. I've seen the room all being done up. Dave, if I didn't know any better, I would say you have a couple of pounds here somewhere. Where is it? <laughs> it's, <laughs> no, it's in that big crate Keep over there. Keep it in there. Don't tell yeah. her. But um, the, the, the thing is, I've seen a few people. Who, how In the world of, of um, psychics and the work you do in the readings, yeah. do you feel there's a, a crossover or do you feel there's some people taking the piss in the world of like wellness do you think there is a cross um, over there because I've seen a guy preaching sun in your perineum lifting your hole up into the sun and saying it brings you positivity um, I've said this very clearly lately um, I'm not a therapist I'm not a life coach I'm not a counsellor I'm not a trained professional in that way in any way at all I simply love divination I love tarot I love crystals I love scram mirrors I love palm reading I love all of it I love all of that and I've always been interested in all of that. That always, to me, contained magic. When I was younger, I didn't really have interest in ghosts. I was frightened of ghosts, even though they were very present. I had no interest in them, really. That was the frightening part of it. But I had an interest in magic and an interest in the unknown. Mm-hmm. And do you think, though, that there are people out there doing all this wellness? This is what you need to do. Um, get out there. I think there's a lot of... Well, I'll say it. I'm just going to say it. Get it out there, on the Go for it. There is a lot of souls out there, and God bless them. They're only trying to make a living like everybody else. But at the same time, I do believe there's a lot of people trying to sell a lifestyle right now. There's a lot of people trying to sell something right now. There's a lot of cults right now. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of cults. There's a cult of everything. There is. What sort of cults do you see at the minute? Um, are, what are the cults to watch out for? In the nicest know? possible respect, and the most beautiful respect. And the most beautiful respect. Mm-hmm. You've got the cult of comedians. You've got the cult of makeup. You've got the cult of various different cults there's mm-hmm. various different cults spread out across belfast and there is i mean and it's the way we are as human beings and is there are there who are the cult leaders who are the cult leaders of makeup and who are the cult leaders of comedy well i think shane todd's done pretty well i think he's pretty synonymous now with but, comedy here i mean he still has a golden boy in my eyes i think he's still yes there's a lot of good new talent and all now and i think be perfect's absolutely smashing i mean i'm not i'm not saying it in a negative way but there there is a lot of great things for people to get into and mm. 
we do need to follow. This is the way we are. We follow in the footsteps of, steps of others. But I wouldn't want anybody to follow really in my footsteps because I feel like I've had to learn the hard way. And I. Mm -hmm. But you know what, I mean? Shane, obviously a good friend of mine and very funny guy, but yeah. a cult leader, I don't think a lot of people no, would follow no, him definitely and take on board his lifestyle and take on board what he would preach. He would be, if he was a cult leader, I think we'll live in a very dangerous world. Because God knows what he would do. Well, this is it. Well, it's not really what he would do, it's what his wife would tell him to do. Oh, don't say that, Michael. Well, is this something you fear? Oh, it's not, it's, it isn't a bad thing. Oh, I mean, it isn't a bad thing. I mean, it isn't a bad thing, but Northern Ireland, because it's so bloody small, it is. Everything feels very clicky. And I'm telling mm. you, for the underdogs who are watching at home and who maybe will not even put a profile picture up, that is exactly how it feels. And we need mm. to make that more inclusive. We need to make everything fucking more inclusive. So if you see me, we be a bit of eyeliner on, just shut your mouth. Do you know what? Buy a lipstick. On that, on that buy a lipstick or a blush. On that front. Um, I think, you know, I, I don't think the commies a click per se. I think, uh, you know, no. there's different things yeah. people do. You know what I mean? Like, for example. No, but you'll stay in your zone. Yeah. You will you all, all stay in your comedy zone. See, and I sometimes find it hard. I don't even try and be in psychic because Glenn's only a screen name. I think it's, mm -hmm. and that's me telling myself, Glenn's only a screen name. It's psychedelic Glenn. Yeah. Really? And it's only shortened to be psychic Glenn. It's psy chick. You're say to your psychedelic chick Glenn. Da, da, da. You're a psy chick? Who is psy chick offs? Satan's psy psychedelic chick. chick. I'm every but a psychedelic chick. That is psychic. The word, the word in that spell. Say chick. Say chick. Say chick. Say chick. Say So you're so. I'm a so say, correct not a say people. chick. A say ch and your say key and your and your third eye hole. So your third <laughs> third eye hole. Fill the cavity, yeah. Fill the cavity. Fill that cavity. Fill that cavity. So say chick. So from going forward, not psychic clan anymore. Well, psychedelic clan. But Psy I'm not. I uh, What I do is my profession. It's what. It's an art, really, and I love it. I enjoy it, and it's something that I, I've, I've interest and keen interest in, but. It's not something that I need to promote and shout every day because I already have women, grown women, knock on the door and I can't refuse them or say no when it is that yeah, kind of situation. Like and it's sweet, it is. I'm glad I like to be needed in life. I honestly do. I don't have any children yet, so I like to be needed. So it's fine. I love what I do, but I have to be in good form to do it. I have mm -hmm. to be, you yeah. know what I mean? Just but I'm learning to laugh more, Dave. I swear, yeah. I'm learning. I just wish I had been ready medicated last year and I mm -hmm. would have been a brilliant stand-up comedian. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't ready. My nerves were wrecked. Glenn, come on. My nerves were wrecked and I didn't need that sort of pressure, but now I feel good. That's yeah. mad. But is that something now you feel like you've itched this, you've scratched the itch? You've no, I feel there. like now nah, really, I'm really itching now. Uh -huh. Amazed. Really? I am amazed. I like to have a laugh and you know what? I don't think people would appreciate me as much if I harped on in a very serious, serious manner all the time. I really, really, really don't. I think the world has enough of that. I think the world has enough profits. And I think sometimes being silent and leading in a certain way doesn't have to always be spoken. See, now, if people are familiar with your, your social media, your yeah. online content, I want to talk about this. I've been sent the message from Catherine to ask you this. Yeah, yeah. She goes, what's the deal with going on with this this foodie, foodie Glenn nowadays? She's like, is this a new <sighs> thing you're working on? Or Do you know a... what? It's, I've realised lately that social media is about being relevant. And I couldn't think of one fucking thing that made me really relevant. Mm -hmm. But I mean, I'm being honest, you change your wallpaper how often, I mean, really, like... How many houses do you need to live in? I mean, there's just so much, and I think about it, and I do it, and that's not getting at anybody, but it's just, I feel sometimes I'm on a different planet, I am. And it's sweet, but like we all eat, we all have to eat, and that's why I didn't realise people were so interested in every bite I ate, every breath mm -hmm. I took, and I'm letting people in a wee bit more. But now, I need to ask you this question as a friend is every bite of food that nice? Yeah. Is it that oh nice? Oh my God, or? and the salads are this word. Yeah. This is why you need to try it. I need to bring it one day for him. I you swear. Need, you need to go. It's you... still a takeaway. Uh -huh. it, it's, listen, it's still a takeaway. It might be a salad. You might think, fuck, oh, it's a health break. Whoa, whoa, health break. <laughs> it's a takeaway. Takeaway. Yeah, but it's... it's That's it's, a life hack. I know you get that is an actual life hack. Get the salad. Are you finding a lot of more different followers following you for that? Or are there like well, freaky people just in the eating? Like one well, here and this freaky many. people, as you say, that I didn't realise people were actually sexually stimulated by people eating. Oh, so there are guys and girls or both? I just, mm. I can feel the energy sometimes. And it's like, mm, 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 oh, mm, oh my. Because, you know I, what I mean? And I swear, like, I don't know why, but people enjoy this. Some people say they just enjoy my faces of it and they know the pleasure. And I don't know what that means, but I think as as humans, we like to see each other fed and watered. Mm -hmm. It's like I like people like to see people laughing too. Don't they? Like no, what I mean, people kept going to get the salad too. Yeah. I'm like, well, let's are they, get it in there. Guys, messing you, be like, well, get that salad, Glenn. 
and you're people like, are ringing they're going can you give me the Glen salad and it's only those certain items mm-hmm. so they're not getting any any more anything nice they're getting those exact items that I get because I've cherry picked it what, speaking of salads what do you get more pleasure out of a tasty salad or a tossed salad well a tasty salad See, to be honest that goes to show you that's you know, shoot, you're getting old Glenn yeah. that's it this is exactly it oh I mean God. I would rather taste that coleslaw in my mouth than that tuna mm-hmm. oh Instead my of the God taste of the f- yeah shit <laughs> oh. <laughs> the t- or the t- you know what I mean yeah. but the uh, I also um, have found out recently about s- there are certain fetishes that are very common like the thing yeah. e- eating an ASMR whatever that means I think that's it's just a- that's it that's what some of the videos are like sort of yeah. a- I mean, it is. Sometimes I don't care. And like, from a start of taking that wee thing too, I don't care. If you see me in my house, go, I don't care. I don't wake up looking like this. And some days I'll take my hair off and say, if you don't like it, tough. You know what I mean? And that's just the way it is. And I'm now I'm like, but I didn't realise people like to see you like eating food. No, I don't know. Then you find out other pervy wee things like feet. People are big into feet. I, I don't get that. I know. Well, I got it. I understand that. But do you like, do you, do you like the food, do you? It, it's not the worst thing in the world, like oh. really. I love you, getting my feet rubbed, like I do. I mean, I, I'm not even. It's not. I mean, I can love every person from head to toe, like. But it doesn't mean like I have a foot fetish. Doesn't mean I have. No people. It doesn't. There'll be like four. No, there's some feet. other. There's some other it. very sort of niche things out there that I just. What's the most niche thing you've heard of? Like to be honest, sodomy, sodomization, all that stuff. Like there's a lot of stuff out there. It's just. It, it's not for me. It's kink in a way that just I just. Sorry. But sodomization? No, is like... Is that the, different to what I th- am thinking about? Well, this is a misconception, Dave. Not all gays get pounded. Not all gays even like to do that. I mean, that's sometimes a bit of an effort, too. It's a bit of an effort. Like, yeah. Well, I mean... Uh, not all gay people are... And you shouldn't have that assumption that all gay men are like that. But then also, it seems to be a more common theme, generally speaking now. Like, if there are people who are in heterosexual relationships who are interested in dabbling in that. Yeah. Strap-ons and things. Well, this is it this mm-hmm. is that, that's a very very good point and a lot of men sorry a lot of cis i have to say the right word now mm-hmm. apparently couples a uh, couples are the men men are getting the prostate massage now mm-hmm. it's working out a treat and the common like they've never came and blah 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 dave's gonna go and try <laughs> you know what i dave there's been with something in here you could sit on but this is this is the thing now don't get me wrong i've never experienced that feeling however I felt the, the press the, underneath your balls. The press underneath your balls really hard. But even you, you need like a big poo. That feels good. Is it like that? I suppose I don't know. But I wouldn't. Also, I feel that when you're in a loving relationship, I don't think I could do that to my wife. Whereby I could be like, "Could you put something up my?" No one needs to go up there. No one needs to go up there, Glenn. It's not a good place. It's not a Garden of Eden. Do you know what well, I mean? This is it. It's a derelict building site with possible bodies underneath. This it's not, is it. You know what I mean? And it. Like, do you know, and I, I really, I think about that, I get really, really, like, turned. I'm very turned. I know when I am, I'm, very, I'm very, 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 <laughs> no, I'm very grotesque, even the way I speak sometimes, and I am, I admittedly, I'm disgusting, but, like, it is only a joke, and in reality, oh. like, no, I, I couldn't. No, I just like, I, I mean, I couldn't, I have to be, like, I have to be sexually attracted. Something for her, it doesn't, like, there's no energy, there's no, like... And that's something that is connection based. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, it is. It's connection based. It definitely is. I mean, it definitely is. Because I've had really, really, really good intimate relations, and then I've had really bad intimate relations, and there is a difference. Have you ever had one where you thought you got all? You're like, this is going to be great, and it happens. You're like, what the fuck? This is terrible. Yeah. Is mm-hmm. that the biggest disappointment in life? Or when you and think sometimes, you're getting... you know what? Sometimes I'm the disappointment. But then do you? Because I say if I'm not India, I just stop and I go, sorry, I'm not into this. This is not happening. Like, don't you fucking dare lift your hand to me, or don't like it's whatever it is. Like, I'm not being funny. Like, when you're a younger man, yeah, you, you can maybe be a wee bit sort of promiscuous and meet people and like not her, but I no, like maybe in a foreign country, maybe yeah, it would be fine. Yes, someone that doesn't speak English, yes, it's fabulous. <laughs> See, I don't, like, I'm very sort of private person. Like, I, I, I like having friends and I love friendship, but. Do I need somebody like up my hole or somebody like trying to make them understand me? Definitely not. And until I meet somebody who's mature enough to really get it and get all of it, every page of the magazine, then. Can I uh, the only magazine where nobody's gone bang. I'll shoot myself in the head there before I'll settle down. So well. I don't even know where to come back from that now, Glenn. That's. I don't even know where we started. Like, why did this start? We're talking about but this is what I'm, if I got in the wrong relationship, it, it would turn me like it could be a really bad. Thing for my head, mm. like, and that's why I'm just no, 
You know what I mean? I'm, I know what's good for me and I know what's not. And I, I go on dates and all, and I, I do try and have a laugh, and I'm really, really, really forward and I'm upfront about it. But do you think that's just you not met the right person? 100%. I know I, I do I you think. Right I do think when you meet the right person, so see all I. the barriers you put up. I know, I know. I, date, I, don't I know when I meet the right yeah. person, I'll know. Because the other two people in my life that I've loved in the past when I've been in relationships, for long-term relationships, I knew I loved them. I knew I loved them. The, do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I've not felt that, really. I've not really felt that in a long time. No. But you know what? It'll come out of nowhere and hit you. Hopefully not too soon. No. But then, this is the thing with everyone. I remember we found out we were having it's a It's the last thing I want. I feel like I'm only fighting me. I feel like I'm only being born. And I'm only allowed to be me. And I'm only, honestly, and it's like, no, now you're going to settle down. No, no. Give me a break. I don't want to settle down. I swear, I see the idea of it. Like, it's just, no. Yeah. No, 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 no. Glenn, that's my life, mate. I know. You know, I'm settled. Don't, don't be... Put me off my life. Like, bar the four years that I've actually been in relationships, I have been on my own 17 years. Isn't that horrendous? What do you mean? Like, so I've, lived, I've lived on my own 17 years. Oh, I lived go back own? from, like, lived on my own. And not I was going to say, Glenn, no not harm needed here, not, not needed, like, yeah. not, not needed. And yeah. not, I swear. But, th- and I've really, and when I was young, I was really, really, really mad about that. Like, not mad, but like, I wanted to be independent. I forced it. I made it that way. But as I'm older now, I'm more laid back. And, I let people be are for me now and all. Like I mean, mm-hmm. I, I let the love in. I, I do. I'm not like I'm not in any way struggling. You're anymore. not like a love Scrooge. No, no. I don't constantly need somebody to make it better. All right. In fact, when other people try and make it better, it goes often horribly wrong. Do you like to do? Because this is a, the thing. I think that you need your own space. Completely. I think everybody needs their own Completely. space. I think there's that in life. You yeah. have to make time for it. And if you don't, it can get a bit overpowering. I think you have to make time for that. Yeah. But do you think now that you're so like you and you know yourself yeah. so well that if someone came in, they'd have to just be like, I need to just work around, Glenn. I'm not going to, you know, I'm not, because no, I don't I, think you cope well with someone being like, Glenn, don't sit there. Glenn, don't put that there. Don't you get your feet off. This is sofa. the whole don't, thing. I, you'd lose it. You'd be like, fuck off. I wouldn't mind somebody organizing me more. I think mm-hmm. that's a great attribute. If somebody was to come along and organize me more, fantastic. I Maybe think, you need, just need a PA. That's what you need. Well, possibly. But then, you know, I think somebody can come along and better your life when you're ready. Mm-hmm. But I have not met that person yet that I'm, and I'm sorry, I'm not just going to, like, I, I swear to God, if you really just come to me, I'll give you exactly what you want. And most, most people in life have an angle or there's something that they want, really. And I, I laugh and I, I can really have, and I've made some good friends out of that, like, I'm not going to lie. Mm-hmm. And it's fun. And that's so much better than being like, I mean, my God, don't ever wish. Like, all I'm saying is the right person will understand this and that's it. Maybe it's a defense mechanism, too. Maybe it's like, but no, like, I will know the right person. Definitely, like, the, and an all no, how about that? No, but see if the right person's coming along, you're like, just pump the brakes until another couple of years. Just well, no, I think when more. it comes along, that's how it'll come along, and I'll be ready. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? But right now, I, I know I'm frightened of it almost. Like, like I am, yeah. I don't want to go there yet. I don't want to, I don't, because once you go, that's it. Do you know what I mean? That's it, and that really is it. And I know the next person that I really meet and love that will be it because I've I'm matured and I've grew up now, and I know that'll be it. In many ways, I miss the madness of who I used to be. Mm-hmm. Sometimes, and that there, I'm still like in that part where I'm too selfish to give me up. Yeah, and my crazy wee ways. But I know I'm going to have to give it all up to have kids, and all. You know I know I'm going to have to raise someone. And don't, I am. I'm going to do that when I'm older. I am. I don't ever. Yet. I don't see you ever being completely dampened. I don't. Because you know, would like say dampened. I love how like, you said it's completely but you know dampened. What I, mean? I I can't see you're like you're not going to be. You're not going to have a wee moustache, just, and you're not going to wear a wee shirt, Fuck, wear a wee pair of trousers. Well, I you? don't know. You're not going you to don't, be... You don't know. Like, because uh-huh. all I'm saying to you is, I, I haven't had the hair plugs done because one day I might want to look old. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm a firm believer in, like, being who you are and being what age you are and being at all. Like, I do I actually do not want to be... I, like, I don't resonate with people, really, in the 20s. Uh-huh. Maybe females, some females, some, some girlfriend. Yes, I do, but... I mean, it's different. Some certainly males as well. I mean, it's the same, but... I mean... Really, I, older people, people me own. Do you know do what I mean? Know what? It is hard though sometimes yes, to be because it's generational, isn't it? It's different. Yeah. I feel sorry for the younger ones these days. I don't know what the fuck. Because they're all wee bollocks. I know, but what, what really, what state have I left the place in? That's why I got a wee bit upset when the place turned to chaos, Dave. Because I was like to myself, it's very triggering for the older people, mm-hmm. like the pensioners and all, because they live yeah. through it. And if we haven't learned from it now, what turmoil is that causing them? Because you're talking about the riots and things that went on? Yeah. Are they still going on in Belfast at the I minute? Think, I think it's pretty much calmed right. down now. Like, but I'm, it's it's not nice to see public servants being attacked. It's not nice to see young ones even in that position. It's not nice to see hate. 
Mm-hmm. And, it, and I mean, it isn't. And I hadn't seen anything like that really here since I was a wee boy. Like, truthfully, mm-hmm. since I was a wee boy. And just having my grandparents said so blatantly to me and my mummy, this is what way we had to live growing up. Like, mm-hmm. it just, it was like... Yeah. And I just, a bell went off my head and I was like, what? I was like, no. I was like, no. And I was like, no, because we have, like, I've found out that I have family. Like, I didn't realise, Dave, my nanny's sister was shot. Mm-hmm during the Troubles, and her husband was murdered during the Troubles, mm-hmm. and I have a big, big, big Republican side family mm-hmm. that's on the other half of Belfast, and then on the other half is like all on yeah. the Shankill side. But it's like, I didn't know all this really until we went to Angela Dunlap, mm-hmm. it was weird. And from Angela then, Dunlap is a, a psychic medium, psychic. she's fantastic, she does live shows, but we went to her, and I knew if I brought my nanny, something was gonna come through, but right. it's just to come through, but it was weird, I was doing my family tree at the time, so and I had not really, I didn't give, me Aunt Jean, and that's what I'm going to come back on to say what her name was. But just let me say, so before, I hadn't given much thought, right, but it all clicked, and that's why I see from mm-hmm. then I felt more like, how do you say it, connected with God. So did you go and see her, was she doing a show? We went to see a show, or and, did you, and we went to see a show up in, um, me and my aunties and my mum and my nanny, because you know, we love all that, like, and Angela's really, really good, like, but I knew if I went with my nanny, and my nanny yeah. sat beside me, I knew she would get a message, but I just knew it was my now, instinct. How does that affect, sort of, like, if you're there and there's... Like, oh, I got there, a massive download. Can you get... I got a massive download and it was it was so crazy because every time I'm around Angela, something weird happens. Like, the last one of the last times I was around her was the day Queen Elizabeth died. Mm-hmm. Like, I got this weird thing done and, like, this weird recce done. A bell went off. Mm-hmm. It was just a weird day and Angela was there that day. It's just weird. Every time I'm around, it's something So the last time clicks, you like, saw her, did she pick you out of the crowd and then tell you some stuff or how did that come about? Well, she, it was my nanny she was speaking to. Mm-hmm. And, and what is? But my mind was going, bing. Uh-huh. And the whole different, I was seeing something completely no. different and it was just, it was mind blowing. But it wasn't that dark, it was like it brought me to heaven and it brought me to God and I could see them up there and it was Easter time too, kind of. And I knew they were all up there at Easter and I did my family train and I found all my cousins, I found some of my cousins in my spell fast. And it was like, how weird is that? Like, and they were following me and all and we didn't even, they didn't even know I was a cousin. Do you know what I mean? It's mm-hmm. weird, we have the same great granny, just like, and that was all the same shit, the same radish shit, that the same hate the same division that caused all them to fall apart as family. And I just think we can never allow that to happen again to any part of society at all. You can't I mean, you can't let your kids go through with your fucking elders ready but mm-hmm. to have me to nanny spank all your asses. What do you think the problem with the riots is? What do you think the cause of them is? And what, what um, would you, you think, send anybody involved um, in the riots? I think it's a lot of it is misinformation too. But I will say this you cannot always blame young people whenever there is a great lack of leadership mm-hmm. within the world in general. And I feel what we're feeling, both feet on the ground, you can hate me, that's only my opinion, is the people are actually stressed out really with the government and in my view, not trusting of a government really since to 2020. And this is where we're going. Anna. 2020? I think there's been you know, and there for a lot longer than that, Glenn. No, I mean, no. back before 2020, I'll tell you that my older grandparents fully believed in society, were fully like, institutionalised members of society, the way old school people are, mm. not so much now. And that is a very, very, very frightening thing. That is about to all the public servants, people are like, are trying to keep it together. That's a very frightening thing when older people, when older people lose faith in what they have believed in their whole lives. That is not, that is a disgrace thing for the world. It's a bad thing, and that's what's creating some of, that's what it's actually feeling a lot of this, it is. Mm-hmm. Because the older people are absolutely entitled to their opinions, and they are. But you know what? Like, my grandfathers are very different on, on opinions, right? Mm-hmm. Just put it that way. They're both older men. They're both old school. They're very different in their opinions. Are they different with each other or different from you in opinions? Um, I can see both of their point of view. Mm-hmm. I'm more inclined to maybe say with my, my granddad Gordon on some mm-hmm. occasions. My granddad Sam's maybe a wee bit more in the far right, maybe. Mm-hmm. Things, it's just how he was raised, just how he was brought up. Yeah. And he's very much entitled to his opinion, as is every senior shit, as is every person, actually. But I think the older citizens, mm-hmm. we need to really tread carefully around them because they have lived this. Do you know what? I think there's so And I much think there's a certain amount of sensitivity. How do you think that must feel for them? Mm-hmm. It must bring everything back, is all I'm saying. The, the people that were, were, were murdered and people that didn't make it and the families were broke. It must bring, when things happen, they hear the helicopter and all, it must just bring all that back and... Mm-hmm. What way, is that, what way is that to be in your old in like, your old age? There's generational trauma, certainly, a lot yes. of people. But I also and I think, think we were here to break that, Dave. I think all the, ra- the, the racism is just a fucking disgrace. It is. It absolutely is. And I also blame 
And I think and part of the media, I have to. I'm sorry. Uh-huh. Like, look at the way they went on about Harry, Megan, and all. And mm. and, and truthfully, I hope you can see the, the truth in it. Really about me, the way I've done dancing and being the native. I hope you can see the irony in it. Because this is the way I'm being psychic now. It's not mm. by me telling you. It's about me acting a certain way, and then but something happens. You know what? I I just think that the you know the the way people are uh, are taught wrong. You know, I think it what is. people know. I think what people hear. I think there's so many. This is the problem of the world now. It's there's so much access to fake news. Yeah. They don't know what's real or what's fake. If you follow, like well, I will tell you this, and this is really interesting. My clients in California, right, had absolutely no idea what was going on in the UK or Ireland at all, and a lot of their social media was censoring it, so they couldn't see it in that region. Mm-hmm. And until he really went on and googled it, he couldn't. One of my clients could not find what I was talking about, mm-hmm. and could not believe it. Could not actually. Be. So it just shows you we really are living in that sort of wormhole funnel now, where your screen might not be the same as somebody else's yeah. screen. Do you know what I always think? But this is the, the issue with social yeah. media. You follow who you want to follow. If yeah. you have your beliefs and your ideas, you follow yeah. people that spout those. So yeah. you get behind them, you hear what the far right's saying, what the Tommy Robinsons of the world's saying, yeah. and you go, he's right and all, but you don't hear the actual facts. Yeah, no, you know, no, like you definitely a don't. Lot of, a lot of people are giving off with a lot of foreign nationals, men, being in I, hotels. But you know, I mean, I've got a, a problem. Of, well, that is a different yeah. issue again, and women women feeling a certain way is a completely different issue again. again. Women Public children, funding is a different issue again. Immigration is a different issue again. Bureaucracy is bureaucracy, right? And unless young people, mm. unless young people are affected enough to go, right, I'm not putting up with this, I'm not having kids in this, and I'm going to become them. I'm going to get into the political world and I'm going to lead. See, unless you do that, it is never you ever going to change. Need, Glenn. And I can't, people, no. Like, people yeah, need to get people need to lead, yes. People need to get out and take their kids off street. What the fuck are you doing? So well, I've said that too. Like, warm their arses. And I've, I've seen a lot of young ones, like, I've seen like a lot that. of young ones yeah. out there, and it's just, it, they're, but it's easy to get they're only teenagers, like, Impressionable young ones to do yep. your bidding for you. Yep. Of course yep. But listen, this and is I just think Glenn, this is silly. I this think podcast, elitism, let's not get into it. Elitism is wrong. Like, how yeah. can anybody be a billionaire in this day and age? Yeah, but you know what how I mean? do you fucking sleep at night? How do you sleep at night? You don't own anything. You own nothing, right? You own nothing. And you never own anything. Your dream, really. And we're all fighting over who owns what. Seriously, none of you own anything. You don't even own the body you're in. It's temporary. And that's a really harsh truth, but it's true. And the fascists and the people who are elite, and honest to God, I lo- I'm going to go off one day because these mm-hmm. same people are trying to tell you, Dave, you to save the climate and save the world while they're flying on their private Jeff and Blackpool to wherever. But listen, hypocrisy is the thing, isn't it? Everywhere across the world, Glenn, hypocrisy is the problem. I just think we elitism. need to start valuing people more instead you of know what stuff. I just think instead of stuff, you yeah. know, stuff. I, that's one thing I don't like is stuff. I've had stuff. I've had the things I've wanted. And I, I'm glad I've been able to like share a lot of things. I'm, I'm actually getting rid of loads of stuff, like clothes and all, because I'm just... A lot of people live in a dream, like this fake world. I know. You know what I mean? People are looking for the wrong things in life. You know what the most important asset in the world is? Time. I know. And every, that's one thing you can't get back, Glenn. It's, it's very, very true. Do you know what I mean? And, very, very, very and true. And you can have all the money in the world, but at the end of the day, the only good thing it'll buy is time. And exactly. That's the way I think. But you if think you waste it, you if know, you had that goes. sort of money, like, oh my God, how could you not be like, how could mm-hmm. you not be changing the world? Like, yeah. But you know, but then again. But this is the way the world is. I mean, in the end of this, it's a big test. But I just don't I, get captured you know in what? the grip of materialism. I try to look past it all, but politics and all anymore. I, I know. That's why I don't so envy. Like, I mean, yeah. I really do not envy any person on this planet. So I don't care about you've got, you've got a crown in your head and you live in a palace. Like, I don't envy you because, believe you me, you're a prisoner in that palace. Mm-hmm. And that crown's pulling you down. And I speak to any, and anybody, and I mean, it's the ego. The, we all must battle our own ego. The ego's a terrible thing. But really, to be part of the human experience and all that spectrum, you do need the let go material. Tell me this. What's Glenn's opinion? Who's going to win psychic skills? Who's going to win Trump easily, you think? I think so. And I think it's the whole mm-hmm. stage is being set. But again, is Trump... Do you like Trump? Trump? I did love Trump years ago. I loved. The, I mean, I did. I mean, and, and certainly was very stimulated um, during that era, twenty twenty, whatever. But I don't know if that's the authentic. I just don't know what what, we're, what it is anymore. I honest to God, and I feel really, really horrified and shocked for Americans mm-hmm. because, like, it's just I don't. It's a very scary world. It is a very scary world. Mm-hmm. I mean, it really is a very, very, very frightening world. Yeah, like, you know what I think the first. And I think is? it's being. I think the entertainment. Like I mean, I love the entertainment value. Mm-hmm. The entertainment value of. I mean, it's fucking amazing. I mean, it is. I do enjoy it. But it is entertainment to me. Mm. They don't live in that setting, thank God. No. Would you ever want to move anywhere? Would you, would you, could you see Glenn in America? Visiting, yes, but not living there. No. 
No. You not want to hot and in fact we have a fuck we have a lot to catch up on here. The housewives, you still on top of those guys? Do you still like them? You well, still I still love them? them. I'm still I'm waiting on Beverly Hills to come out the new series. I'll be waiting mm. next year for it to come. I love them. Have I you been chatting to any them. of them recently? Well not so yeah, but not so lately. Not so lately. No. And, and the last couple of months, yeah. Yeah. But do you reckon your future still lies in, in reading them? Know. Well, I think so, yeah. But mm -hmm. I think it's going to be at a point where I can't be arsed. Who are you more into now these days? Who are you more? Who is entertaining Glenn of a day? What are you watching? Um, what are you into? Who do you love? There's, mm -hmm. I'm in love with some influencers at the minute. I'm not going to lie. I'm more I'm seeing things online than more I'm seeing different people. Do you like influencers? I'm starting to I love, feel I'm uninfluenced. I'm, start, I'm starting to love people who are re like, I don't know. There's just certain like, people tell like us some influencers you like. Well, I like who, that, who the, the girl that make me shots. They're very real. They're a wee dairy couple. They're real. She's mm -hmm. great. She makes that chat. Elaine Maxwell. She's good. I mean, there's Jillian Maxwell. Saying, Maxwell. Elaine Maxwell. She's Christ. No, not her. Not the Maxwell. She's Christ. Glenn. For goodness sake. I know, but you know she could fly a submarine. Or fly a helicopter and... I don't know what the word is that for is, a submarine. I don't know, because how can you sail something that's fucking submerged? What is it? What's the word? I don't know. Pilot it, I guess. But I mean, I would be keen to see someone flying a submarine. I think that would be... Well, that's That would be a lot to see. Jeez, I think it's actually a I think it's like glass too deep. Do you know I think that's a smoke screen, Ty? What is Maxwell? Yeah. No, not I, just your old Maxwell. No, but I think it's organs. I think it's all organs. And I think organs? It's, or, yeah. It's, organs? It's, 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 it's that they're, they're harvesting organs. They're harvesting human's body parts and in a time when things couldn't be reproduced then when Madeline McCann went missing and that oh, no. time <laughs> yes no. boom no. Do, you know, no. do you get what I'm saying I don't. it's just weird how I don't. she would have had and parents are doctor and all because it's thing see you say one thing to me Dave you can leave mm -hmm. me off I know anyway let's talk about that dairy shot you've been drinking that it's what, fantastic what does it do and what's the benefit well of normally it? I can't eat anything without having the shites <laughs> right I have very fast bowel but not lately my stools have been the way you word things, like, my stools have been like, um, it's a piece of art. The way you word pieces things. of art, You're pieces of solid art. They like them bottles. Solid art, stool. solid stool, solid stools. Yeah, mm -hmm. and that to me is a good thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. and what you? I mean, why am I asking you this? What? What was? I always thought it'd be better IBS, but it's yeah. not that dark. I am borderline and line anemic. I know I need to get iron in me, uh -huh. but. Yeah, no, that wee shot's good, like, and it's helped my belly. But what does it do? What is the benefit? Because this is the thing, For right? me, for me personally, it's yeah. helped my stomach. But I mean, it's helped my stomach. Well, I, I know Most people, it's given them energy. What's it supposed to do? What does it say on the bottle when you're selling it? What does it say? It what says on the bottle, suspected, possible oh. immune booster, and it's right. an energy booster. And what does it taste like? It tastes like lentil soup with garlic and onion, and it doesn't taste what it looks. And, and I know you, everybody thinks it's fruity and zesty. It actually isn't. It's more like, but it's like, good. Like a, a, a sort of a cold. It tastes soup. like a well cooked meal. Like a gazpacho? No, but it's not. It's the taste of it. It's how much do you drink of it? It's actually nice. Then, see, after you drink it, the uh -huh. taste of it, you kind of. It's a wholesome taste. I can't explain it. It's it's a nice taste. It is a nice I taste. I drink uh, greens in the morning to get yeah. my. And it tastes like shit. There's fuck all in there. I'm telling you, there's nothing like in. See, a lot of this stuff. Uh -huh. You're not eating, you're not eating food no more. You're eating food like products. Where is all the stuff from the 90s, Dave? I want it back now. You don't get half the fucking stuff. Where's the lucky bags? Where is all the stuff from the 90s? Where are they? What do you mean, lucky packs and what else? Lucky packs. No, but <laughs> then we ice pop things, they're gone. There's lo them squeeze ups. Do you remember the sorbet squeeze ups, the orange ones? They're gone from existence, mm -hmm. wiped off. So is Bird's custard. Well, I think you can maybe get it down. And yeah. I don't know. But then go to Tesco's. You can get Clippo squeezers. You can get. I want the sorbet the, ones. The sorbet ones. It's the one. Deal Farm. Deal Farm used to make sorbet like squeeze ups. They were called squeeze up. Make them again, sorbet place. Because they were delicious. And it's like the Joker ice cream, wee bit. A wee oh. bit like that. It's a wee bit like no, that. No, Glenn, the Joker ice cream's great. Yes. Right. Listen, we need to talk about ice cream because I want to put this out there publicly. Yeah. I am doing a challenge with Catherine. Right. From now until the end of the year, I'm not going to eat any ice cream. Are you like cake? I, I, just not just ice cream. I, because ice cream is my shit. I love ice cream. It's my favorite thing. And she's given up milk chocolate until the, the turn of the year. So we're not going to have sorbet. I mean, I can have sorbet all day. I can listen, I can bend the system, but just not ice cream. Some sorbet can be, mm, yeah. that's what I mean. The deal Farm could make that. I know they couldn't yeah, even back. See, you know, we're talking about your salads and you're eating in this. Would you do a wee series of you tasting things? A hundred percent. We should. You should use because you have a platform. Yeah. Obviously, to to do that. Would you? Yeah. Has any companies reached out to you to taste things? That'd be something. Well, I would like to watch a wee a series. A few people have things. asked to ask me to go and do things. Obviously, mm -hmm. um, oh, but it's more me. corporate. Oh, that's okay. I've had I was more going corporate to say, See if stuff. other podcasters are trying like to steal you from me, Glenn. I'm well. I mean, I would go on any. I, I would listen. I, 
if you want me to be on your podcast, I can. I'll, what's been your uh, What's your been value. your favorite podcast to go on? Any um, apart from this? Because if you don't say, it, I sorry. did enjoy doing Connor's the other day. I'm not yeah. going to lie. Well, really who's did. Connor? What's his podcast? Connor Quinn is Banterbox. He's really uh-huh. creative, but he does it all himself. He's a photographer, but the way uh-huh. his whole setup is himself. And I know I've inspired him in ways, and I know you've been we've all inspired him in ways, and Shane Todd certainly inspired him in ways, and it's great to see as his level of work's great, and he's quite uh-huh. funny, and I think we could bring him out of his shell, and he could be. Mm-hmm. A, but he is a fantastic critter, but I, I mean, I think he's going to be. And like, I don't know how to explain it. Making bigger productions one day, I don't know. He's very talented, that's all I'm saying. That's and it's good to see, and I think other podcasts. And it's good to see other. I'm seeing a lot of new podcasts and all popping up and all that. It's good. It's and good which to ones see. Have you been on it? You've liked being on. You love the whiskey and white boys, don't you? The whiskey and white boys should have haven't been near me. Where are you? Oh dear. They've been with the bar and all. I've seen them doing all that. It's good to see them all get together and do things. It's good to see all other creators get together and do things. Do you know what I'm saying? Everybody loves connecting to, to each other. They actually really do. They really, really do. Mm-hmm. So don't be shy. Do not be shy. And is there any podcast out there you want to get on or you haven't been on? Um, there yet? Um, Tell us the ones you haven't been on that you like to dabble with. Mm, I'm trying to think. I don't even know. I actually really no. don't know. Would you I've, ever... been on, I've been on all, all, all the ones here that I've wanted to be on, like I have. Mm-hmm. I actually have, over time. Like and you, you were sort of for a wee while there doing was it wasn't it your own podcast with somebody what well, happened there I had or? an idea of that and then yeah. I didn't know what it has me no claim because I wanted to actually contribute and help other creators yeah. who are I say, feel going to be significantly more valuable in society mm-hmm. and to, in a contribution level see I love I love I, say I love all art but I love the editing part of it I see cameras mm-hmm. and all like I just cannot I cannot deal with them listen I can do it and I'm yeah. very good at it but it's just not my thing but give me edit and I can edit all day give me like production I can do that give me ideas and I can but so you, you like influencers then? Because I'd be on the school where I'm like, I it's think... It's not that I like influencers and stuff. I love people that are genuinely wanting to grow. And I love seeing people grow. I love seeing like them come out of their shell and grow. I love that. I think I love that. But do you find it that... Like, I hate it whenever people start off doing stuff. I think stuff there's a lot of it, fakeness too. Yeah, there's oh a lot yes. of like... There's a lot oh. of cringiness like... Yeah. And when I was in my younger years, believe you me, I was cringy too. And it's... But I think too, like, thank God... I thank God I didn't was start this going online before? talking, like being yeah. doing lives and all. Thank God I... Before I was 30, because I'd look back and cringe. Do you ever look back at some of the content you've put out around oh, online and go fuck every day? Yeah, you know what I mean. But you're the greatest. I go, what the hell was I thinking? You're being you. What the hell was I thinking? And sometimes the way I say, as I say politically, I don't mean to be that way. I'm trying to learn how to make a valid point of opinion as well or truth mm. without being politically incorrect. Because I know that really does really people, and I don't mean to even be that way. I honestly don't even didn't even realize it until about maybe I don't know a couple of days ago. Mm. I just got at that thought. I think you're going to say and like it's about the It's about saying that native. It's about saying India instead yeah. of America. And I knew the second I said it was wrong word, and I still post, but I knew. But you know what? I but think at that point, do I politically? But Glenn, there's got to be a realm of forgiveness amongst society. Do you know what I mean? Like well, a lot of people, for example, you say one wrong term. It's not through malice or through racism. Yeah. It's through, you didn't know, it's through, I suppose, yeah. ignorance of this topic. Yeah, and people yeah. be like, he said this disgrace. Yeah. Like, no, sometimes people use the wrong words. I find this especially with older people. Yeah. And people are like, I can't believe he used that term. Aye. Or he or he called so-and-so, uh, and they, they, he, like, like he called so-and-so a, a she, and yeah. she's non-binary. It's like, it's hard for older people always yeah, to know Yeah, it's hard that. for I older think, people. You know, the, the problem that I have is it's just the hypocrisy of everything. Yeah. See if people but sometimes you've got to realise online, there's times when I'm being informative and then there's times when I'm stirring the pot. All right, I'm stirring the pot and being satirical and mm. it's a sense of humour. And See, it is sense of humour and then there's other times I'm actually just informing you. Yeah, but then do and you there's other times I'm wild. Do you almost feel like you should then uh, differentiate between? Cause then that's hi, reality. hi do you do it? Maybe you do some sort of like, I don't know, face like, ah, oh, this I is think me being silly. I, it forces you to get to know me better. I mean, it does, it really forces yeah. you to get to know me better because it means if you, you know me, you understand where I go on and if you don't, you don't. And it's, that's okay. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's a whole new level of calm and happy and that's a whole see, new level thing. See, this is I think I know you well now. So I think I... Think I, I see. I that's can, why I'm not nervous no more now. I was yeah. nervous, wasn't I? Day of yeah. just, but see, at the very start, I think like, you know, you couldn't have t- told what... Because I think you, you see the Glenn, almost the, the online, the character almost yes. you are and then you yeah. see the real Glenn. Yes. And I think you have a heart of gold, Glenn. Yes. I think not a lot of people necessarily know that or see that. Yeah. But I think that's the, the thing that I... I'm drawn to the most. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And I think sometimes you maybe I'm trying to show up more. Yeah, I am but, genuinely trying to show up more because I am. I do mm-hmm. her, and I wish I didn't. Some days I wish I really didn't, but I'm very passionate about certain things, mm-hmm. and I can't help it. I just can't help it. Don't worry, it's so CD or not. Don't worry, it's part of me. It's like, mm-hmm. oh my god, you're older. Do you ever? And I, I wanna, I wanna yield the power in a benevolent manner. 
Yeah, because you you've spoken openly about ADHD, OCD, and things mm-hmm. before. Do you find? Do you ever be a, like with that? Do you ever find yourself able to just chill out? Do you ever find that? Well, or do you always have thoughts and you always THC, thinking about doing something next? Tetrahydrocannabinol does help. What is that? Tetrahydrocannabinol does help when I want to chill out at night. When I want to, it does help. Yes. But I haven't no. About my does does the main go down? Not first thing in the morning. It's not up as high, mm-hmm. and that's why I can be. A, 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 traditionally, that's why I feel like some people, myself included, can be grumpy mm-hmm. in the morning because mm-hmm. you're not. You're not. Your sun hasn't risen really. Mm-hmm. Only really in the afternoon you're really picking in. By around, I don't know, late after about six, you're mm-hmm. not really. And by leg time, if you can stay awake and you have actually a wee bit more access because your mind can think a wee bit more then mm-hmm. at night. But no, sometimes it can be hard to switch off. And this is why I appreciate art and media and things to distract me and things that are colourful in a dark world because when you are the way I am, I can't just watch something for the sake of watching it. It's like, I mean, and I don't laugh, I'm not going to laugh at everything. I can't laugh at something unless I find it really funny. I'm not, I'm not joking, like, and it's just... You haven't laughed once this podcast now? I know. Bitch. I know, but I'm moist. Well, that's good. I'm moist. Thank God for that, at least. It's a moist and sticky in here, oh, Dave. It. And it's not so just it the is. temperature. It's not just the, the temperature. Yeah. It is not just the, the ambience and all. So uh, in the next uh, next while, what's on the horizon for Glenn then coming up? BBC are going to come back to us, and I'm saying it, and they're going to go, make a wee series of something for us. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to go, if you pay me the right money, I will. And if you give me a wee bit of creative control, as in locations, as in where we're going to go, where I think it'd be good I for spook comps and all, because honest to God. I think you'd be a wild man with creative control. Well, Lord not creative, you creative control, but I think there's some places out there in Northern Ireland that I would genuinely, with that idea that we had, with that idea mm-hmm. you had, Dave, sorry, it's Dave's creation, not mine. It's okay. But I think with that it's creation. It's creation, it's our child. Like. Yes, but it could be good to also showcase some of the folklore and some of the things that's quite forgotten mm-hmm. in this time and era. And yes, it's all right. It's all right if someone going out and blogging something or some a creator creating content, but who's actually telling the stories about the band cheese in the fields and all, and all this stuff that we really grew up with? Yes. I think we need to act it all out and play it all out and go and find it. And I think it could be a lot of fun in that. And I think they know that, really. Mm. But listen, it's bureaucracy. And, what, what and I'll we... tell you something else. I'm not being funny. And I'm not, and I swear it's maybe God speaking. If. Spoiler alert, this is God, by the way, not Glenn. If God. I wore a suit, and if I had a lot of wealth, and if I showed a lot of capitalism. People move in. People fairly move in, all right. And that's the difference, really. And that's where that's where media thinks going to become compromising as to what is authentic and what isn't. Mm-hmm. You know. And as I've said, we'll save the day, Dave. Yeah. I can see us in a pound out for each. You know what I mean? I the don't. two BBC pandas. Pa- the two pandas that saved the BBC. The two. There you have it. This is the two pandas that saved the the flea BBC. The, but I mean, does it need to save? The BBC's great, great company. No, but I mean, I think. Mm. It, it could be so much more but I, I, relevant. I it just could be need so much more Glenn, inclusive. I just be, need to ask you. Do you know, and I think we could make some serious program together if. What are we going to do as a panda? Be a, like a motif thing. You know, like your woman with a clown, but no. the collar. Beep! Her used to be on So your... we're going to be the thing whenever programs fail. Yeah. So there's going to be a breakdown in, in, in the, the broadcast. We're going to appear dressed as two pandas. Possibly. There you go. I mean, if anybody out those there pandas could be balaclavas, and we could be just, just storm the office, storm the office, no, 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 and no, no, take over. No, no, let's that's the public let's, broadcast. No, let's not do this. No BBC. No, no, Glenn, no. Glenn, no. Glenn, it's satirical. It's, Glenn, it's a comedy Glenn, podcast. Glenn, you know, it's a comedy. Glenn, Glenn, no, please. And I do think Lesser Spook has a great potential. It has, and it has a lot of fun for like you know what things Glenn? to do. I mean, I, it really does, and I just don't. I don't think they've looked at it hard enough. And I think they need to really go back and look at it and, and really use their own, because it's homegrown kind of, they need to go Glenn, right. Listen, but it's your intellectual property, course, Dave. But, but if they is here, don't want to get up off their arses. Meaning if one L don't want to do it, Dave, we could always get Connor Quinn's production company to make it for us. And yep. pitch it. I'm going to Crater Lab this year. What's Crater Lab? BBC Crater Lab. I'm going to learn. I am. How to pitch things. Because there's loads of things. Yeah, I you're going to be a Trojan Even horse. things it's not even to do with me. Like, there's just loads of, like, even, there's a lot of things even like with the allotments. You know what I'd like to be see a great wee series. I think what you need to do is uh, channel that enthusiasm in the one thing at once. And then go, this is... I've written loads of things. Lo- and I have then. actually, I've, and then, I've written loads of different, and I swear, I'm, I go back on the material I've written now and I go, fuck, I, I, at the time, I was really consumed that, but it's great. It's still even great now. So I need to learn how to do it the right way. And mm-hmm. like, I, when I know how to do something, I'll know how to do it right. And that's, mm-hmm. 
I will be at that point. Glenn, listen, the people are glad to have you back. So now, guess what? It's so good to be back. And you better hound him. Hound, hound him and pound him. No, no, hound don't, him and pound don't him. Don't pound me and pound me, please. Because there's far too many a fanny sat in this seat. Far too many a fanny? Mm-hmm. Do you mean a vagina? Or he, a said every, he said every wee lad going on this seat. S- on the podcast, not... Not to me. Not, and he had, didn't, no. didn't have the chick to phone me and go, Glenn, come down and have a sitting. A sitting? A you, sitting. How, do you, how did you get here? I invited you down for a sitting. The grandfather. What's that? My mean? grandfather gave me a lift because I asked him. Oh, gonna, and it's so good because we're going to be yarn toy. That's the saves. Express his I meant, I, I wanted you here, Glenn. I know. That's what I mean. I know. But you need to want me a wee bit more. Because mm-hmm. you know I'll come on more. Glenn, you know sometimes... Me? It, it, you, you but can, it did need a wee break. It was having a breakout for me. You can dip your rod. You can dip your rod. You need the fish to bite your rod. I know. Sometimes the fishes need to stick their head above the water to get the rod. I know. You know what I mean? And it's not that dirty. I think I did scare everybody last year. Of course I did the way I went on. And I scared myself last year. But this is what you've got to understand about mental health. It isn't prejudice. It's not Do like. You know what, Glenn? It's real. This and this is where I'm like, I'm, I am like saying, then I swear to God, it, like, but it just is. I'm staying This is it. something I think you maybe. It might be worth. That that might be some work you could do with and yeah. like to raise awareness of things because yeah. like there are but people don't like what I've got to say. Yeah, but you, you know, know what? Sometimes they find a way. No, to and I find that, this is what no, I find no, really, I really, really annoying. It just is really annoying. I do what I do, right? So people automatically assume that I should always be like, right, everything has to be nature. Mm-hmm. Hold on a second. I tried that. I would have wanted to believe that. Let's wave a wand, sure. No, I need the psychoactive stimulant that I'm on, mm-hmm. or else it doesn't quite all function. It can't all. Mm-hmm. I can't. Police everything to gear. That's the way it is. But that's the thing. Mental health is, uh, it's such a wide spectrum because everybody just throws mental health out there as a word, as a phrase. But there's so many facets to it. A lot of things are on a spectrum for a reason. There's a spectrum of mental health conditions, issues there. How people behave when they suffer from mental health conditions vary completely. Whether it's someone's having suffering from depression or maybe someone's having an episode with ADHD or or even the it is such a wide. But not everybody knows the the different ways that may manifest or yeah. present itself and i know you've had some issues some some private and some public yeah that you know on the face of it people might just think you're acting as well you know you, but mm-hmm. then then the, the day it's also important for people to go no glenn th- this is as a result of yeah the, the but i'm gonna say this to you in a swear to god i'm gonna say it and i swear i hope you're all listening because this is the power of life. You can absolutely smash your reputation and you can get back up again and mm-hmm. reinvent yourself. Of course you can. And I yeah. I will do that until the day when I die. Like, listen, but you know what, Glenn? No matter what, because we will all yeah. go up and down in life and certain things. But there is a point in time where I think you've got to take accountability. And I guess is where I know a wee bit mm-hmm. now. Thank God I know, like, and I'll know if I start to get stressed out and all again, I'll know, like, right, I need to increase my medication or I need, because mm-hmm. that's always really wrong. at all. I, my medication wasn't working the way mm-hmm. it used to work. Yeah. So I found myself struggling trying to deal with normal things and didn't know why I was struggling. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it really literally just happened like that and I just didn't even really, I didn't even really know what was going on mm-hmm. in that way until like I had my medication increase and I feel better. Yeah. You know what I mean? Good. And this is what I'm saying. And ADHD is like yeah. that. If you've got focus, it's something that you're not, your routine, you build it up is what I'm saying. Yeah. Meaning like your routine, it takes you years to maybe even build a routine. And so then when you, you, you go off that spiral, I needed to go off that spiral in order to get my routine back. So now I feel like I'm back to myself in a whole and more, more connected way. Do you feel, like feel that you that you can can you see it if maybe things if if like you're getting a wee bit off, yeah, you're feeling a bit off. Can you now have the tools to see that 100%. in advance and you're able to address yeah. it? Because I mean I imagine it is very difficult if if you like so you can get paranoid about things. And yeah. You can do you find you maybe hyper focus on certain things and maybe build it up yeah. to be, you know, because I, I know, didn't realize how bright the word was. Almost. Yeah. it's kind of like that. Mm-hmm. And it's a lot to do with how I feel about me in times. Mm-hmm. And I think that is very relevant to every time. I don't know, Chris goes back to when I'm young and don't know, when I was young and didn't understand the world, kind of. And I think sometimes I go back into that and that's why I react the way I do. And, that's, and, and yeah. part of my, part of me being hyperactive is, is that the dancing on you. So she me dancing mm-hmm. a wee bit more tight and I don't care, I love dancing, but that is the hyperactive yeah. part. The hyperactive part of, I've kind of kept hidden. Cause that, that, speaking Do you get of the, what I mean? Speaking of the dance, so and it's the hyperactive part of realizing that's what people find hilarious. But there's a there's it's become a bit of a thing the dance. I know. Like I've seen you sharing stuff with people. People who've been are doing, doing the dance, and, and it's great to see. Created a cult. They have a cult. Yeah, there you go. But no, it is great to have you back, Len. It's great to Dave, see it's you been great feeling to been, yourself. It's been great to be on. The seat's been fantastic. Yeah. I, I do you gotta prefer say. the seats? Do you prefer love the setup? I love it, Dave. I mm-hmm. do. I think it's a lot Good. more zen. It's a lot more like zen. 
But as I say, you just need like a wee light or something like that. I would get a wee something small for her. Yeah. A wee mini lava lamp. Because we need, because the last time you had the skull, but yeah. the skull doesn't match the colour anymore. No. We've got the skull over there. And it's the transitional box. anyway, because so, one day you'll have all yeah. these wee bits and you'll go, ack. Yeah. I remember that podcast. I remember that, you mm-hmm. know, that finger. Not, that's magic. What are you doing with that? What, the magic the finger? you voodoo candle. That was actually, I, th- well, I think I got that because we were sponsored by somebody a while back. Are you going to carve Hulk Hogan's name in yet? No, I'm not going to carve I'm watching burnt steak. No. Fuck, fuck George, what's up? But, no, I... Dave, uh-huh. that is what you can prostate massage with. There you go. Do you say it's always but right, Darcy? So it's... But the only thing is, Glenn, if you lit the candle, it wouldn't smell too good. Mm-hmm. I would say candles have been used before. I say so. I think that's probably why candles were probably invented the way they were invented. Like, let's face it. So why are why are the long and pointy? So, so, you, so they they burn down and last longer, I think. Not oh, the yeah. up your. But I mean, you could do. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> that there, and that's what that means up you, doesn't it? Like, yeah, and that's a good way to leave it, Glenn. Yeah, okay. this has been a pleasure. As a always. pleasure. Love up you. you. Let's let's share some some energy. Oh, it's a beautiful way to end. Mwah. I'm the slack guy.